Omega Force is certainly in a unique position. As stewards and developers of the long-running Musou or Warrior series, they've had the opportunity to work with a wide range of intellectual properties. Their games have a dedicated audience and support just about any theme you could imagine, including the likes of The Legend of Zelda, Dragon Quest, Gundam, One Piece, Berserk, and of course, Fire Emblem. The formula is familiar at this point, but there are notable differences between each iteration that varies depending on who they partner with and the themes at hand. To that end, Omega Force's work with Nintendo has largely been positive. The original Hyrule Warriors is well regarded, as is their take on Fire Emblem, but with Age of Calamity, the follow-up to Hyrule Warriors, they hit a snag. While the game is certainly well made, it's equally known for its technical foibles. Alas, we didn't get a chance to cover the game on Digital Foundry at time of release owing to a packed release schedule, so I wanted to make amends. Not only have I finally given it a proper performance analysis, but as you may have surmised from the video's title, we're focusing on the latest Switch exclusive Warriors game, Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes. The question is, can Three Hopes avoid the performance issues seen in Age of Calamity, and how does it stack up visually? It's a great opportunity to check in with their latest work on the Switch, so let's get into it. So, Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes. Fundamentally, it's another Warriors game through and through, complete with those massive stages to explore, enemies to decimate, and special moves to unleash. You'll recognize most of these elements instantly, but Three Hopes does expand upon the formula in several key ways. Primarily, it's a more narrative-driven game than any Warriors title I've played in the past, that's for sure. This time, it's based on the extremely popular Fire Emblem Three Houses game, but with its own tale that follows a mercenary named Shez. Like Three Houses itself, you can opt to join any of the three, well, houses, which effectively changes the trajectory of the story. That means there's three ways to play through the game. The story is told through conversations between characters happening after each scenario. And if you've played the proper Fire Emblem Three Houses, I think you'll recognize the style here. This is something Omega Force has been doing more and more these days. They're essentially trying to match the look and feel of the game on which their game is based. I'll discuss the technical implications for this later in the video, but the point is, it looks and feels like a continuation of the work done on Three Houses. Of course, they had a clear advantage in this case. Omega Force is a division of Koei Tecmo, and Koei Tecmo was responsible for the technical development of Fire Emblem Three Houses itself. Yes, Intelligent Systems focused on the writing, art design, and game systems for that game, but outsourced the programming and general technical side of things to the team at Koei Tecmo. As a result, I'd imagine this partnership helped ease the development for Omega Force in terms of matching the original visual design. But they take things much further with the base camp sections, rather than limiting it to just a menu system as we would typically see in a Musou game. Three Hopes allows you to spend some time at the base camps talking to your teammates, upgrading your facilities, characters, gear. You can cook, you can take care of horses. All of this serves as strong world building that's typically absent in games like this from Omega Force. So everything outside of the battle has been expanded upon, but while you're in battle, you also have access to a map on which you can command key units around the battlefield. This is especially useful since these games focus on destroying specific targets across the map, and now you can send individual groups off to secure these points on their own. The key here is that it's a more nuanced and complex take on the Warrior series, and it feels surprisingly satisfying. But obviously, the big question for Digital Foundry followers is one of performance and visual quality. So for proper context, let's look at the previous Omega Force Nintendo project, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. This one aimed to replicate the visual stylings of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and in my opinion, it largely succeeds. The lighting, vast fields of grass, and character rendering are all extremely similar, and it looks great. It also uses dynamic resolution scaling up to 810p when docked and features a suitably decent anti-aliasing to clean up rough edges. It's a nice looking game and features perhaps the best animation work I've seen in a Warriors game to date. 
Problem is, during combat, the frame rate drops like a stone, regularly slipping below 30 frames per second when the action heats up, even in these very basic scenarios early on. And this is fundamentally the problem here. The combat just isn't as smooth as it should be, and although it's developed by Omega Force, I tend to expect better results from Nintendo-adjacent projects like this. Their first-party titles typically exhibit exemplary performance, even on hardware like the Switch, but in this case, it's not great. So in coming to Fire Emblem Warriors 3 Hopes then, I was really curious to see how it would fare in comparison, and honestly my feelings are somewhat mixed. There are definitely some serious improvements here, but also certain things that feel like a step back. So as I mentioned earlier, it feels authentic versus Three Houses itself. The dialogue style, the image quality, and menu systems all feel like a continuation of that game which, though it exhibits certain visual flaws, does highlight their aforementioned skill when it comes to adapting the target art style to a new game. Age of Calamity really does look a lot like Breath of the Wild, and Three Hopes looks a lot like Three Houses. Problem is, the image quality feels like a step down from Age of Calamity. Now it tops out at 810p, just like that prior game in docked mode, with all UI elements displayed at 1080p. Portable mode then comes in around 648p most of the time. The difference here though is that the anti-aliasing isn't really up to snuff given the anime style visuals on display in this game. Age of Calamity is a much cleaner game overall. They did do an excellent job at translating the 2D artwork into 3D models, but the thin black lines surrounding characters causes a lot of aliasing that would have benefited greatly from TAA. Now again, this problem is shared with Three Houses itself, but that game runs at a higher resolution. Of course, there's other image quality issues that I have as well, such as the texture filtering. The game features a lot of wide open spaces with flat surfaces, and unfortunately, the texture filtering is somewhat insufficient, resulting in noticeable blur, even at gameplay angles. The main visual critique I have with the game stems from its movement and animation systems and it's a problem that it shares with the very first Fire Emblem Warriors game. There's basically a large bounding box in which the character can run around, but the way it's implemented results in movement that feels relatively weightless and unsatisfying. The running animation also feels sped up, and attacks lacked any serious impact. The issue here is that you'll spend a lot of time running around performing these actions and it never feels quite as good as it should. And while it's not perfect, I actually think Age of Calamity does a much better job with this. The core actions are more satisfying to wield. That being said, if you were okay with the first Fire Emblem Warriors game, I think you'll feel right at home with this one. And honestly, the overarching game is perhaps more compelling, especially if you enjoyed Fire Emblem Three Houses. It's more than the sum of its parts, but it would be nice if the combat felt a little more punchy. But of course, the main point of discussion I want to get to here is the frame rate, right? Because after all, this is the main issue that Age of Calamity suffered from. And that's where the news is kind of a mixed bag, though more positive overall, I'd say. The main finding is that if Age of Calamity spends most of its time in the 20 to 30 FPS range, Fire Emblem is typically above 30 frames per second. It's noticeably higher during normal gameplay in a way that just makes it a lot more pleasant to play. When the frame rate does start to dip, usually during special attacks, it still averages much higher than a similar attack in Age of Calamity. This is applicable in both handheld and docked mode, by the way. So if you were turned off by the sluggish frame rate in that last game, fear not, it's not really an issue here. And ultimately, that's the good news with this one. But alas, they made another decision that I'm not a huge fan of, and one that does have a negative impact on the overall fluidity. They did not implement a proper 30 frames per second cap. That's right, the frame rate is fully uncapped at all times. The issue here is that it mainly averages between 33 and 36 frames per second or so, though it can definitely go higher in select circumstances. Still, it's barely higher than 30 in most situations, and it has improper frame persistence as a result, so it never feels as smooth as I feel it should. They could have had a game running at a nice stable 30 frames per second with occasional dips here and there, but instead it's just kind of all over the place. 
Of course, this could potentially prove useful in the future if a more powerful Switch were to arrive, if this theoretical Switch supported regular Switch games and allowed for enhanced performance, it could mean a fully 60 frames per second experience with this game. But in the here and now, on a normal Switch console, a 30 FPS cap, or at least the option for one, would have been greatly preferable. Of course, this game also supports two-player split-screen, and I wanted to test it because it's a great feature allowing you to team up with a partner in local multiplayer. Now, to support this, the visuals are of course trimmed back somewhat. The shadows are disabled for characters, and distant enemies are called significantly, but what's more surprising is that with these cuts, the performance doesn't actually take much of a hit. In fact, it seems to hover closer to 30 frames per second than in single-player mode, thus it feels slightly less juddery. Of course, it can certainly plunge beneath the 30 frames per second line in certain situations, but it's still a solid way to enjoy the game that makes the battles a lot more fun. They've also opted for the horizontal split so each player gets a wider FOV than you get in the single player mode. The last performance related thing I want to highlight though are the loading times just because they're really quite fast for a Switch game. In fact, I was surprised at how quickly everything moves. This is perhaps one of the things they got most right in terms of technology. But okay, after spending time with the game then, I've walked away with a pair of conclusions. So firstly, in terms of overall design, I feel like this is actually one of the most interesting Warriors games yet released. They're really onto something with this design. The expansion beyond the basics of combat add a lot to the experience, and the additional strategy also enables easier command of the battlefield. It's simply more rewarding to play in that sense. But secondly, the other conclusion here is that the technology needs work. The state of the technology just isn't where it should be. Omega Force has produced so many games over the years, and they're improving in certain areas, like matching the style and design of the franchise they're working with. But the technology needs an overhaul. The performance, the rendering quality, the animation work, all of this stuff is behind where I feel it should be. But still, Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes is a solid game with a lot to love for Fire Emblem Three Houses fans. As I noted, it's one of the better entries in the recent years, only let down by its technology. That said, while it's not a looker, the frame rate is at least significantly improved over Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, even if it isn't quite as steady as I would have liked, so that's definitely something to keep in mind. But with that, I think we've reached the end of this video, so if you enjoyed it, be sure to let us know. Like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and come find us over on Twitter if you want to chat about video games. And. We'll see you next time.